these annual physicals. Did you give him the routine urinalysis, blood chemistry, chest x-rays, K, R, S, P? Listen to this station, ladies and gentlemen, because... Coming up late, number 40 on the hip In his own twisted and distorted lexicon, he calls it faith, strength, truth. But in just a moment, Peter Vollmer will apply his... <laughs> Hollywood. More TV censored bloopers. Hosted by Dick Clark. With special guest stars Rock Hudson and Morgan Fairchild. And special appearances by Don DeLuise, Dudley Moore, Don Rickles. And featuring the unplanned clubs and bloopers of Don Adams, Kay Ballard, Carol Burnett, Bill Burris, Jimmy Carter, Chevy Chase, Bo Derrick, Howard Duff, Eric Estrada, Gerald Ford, Sir John Gielgud, Earl Holloman, Ron Howard, Jack Klugman, Jane Mansfield, Kevin McCarthy, Liza Minnelli, The Muppets, Jim Neighbors, Suzanne Plichette, Martha Ray, Mr. Rogers, Mickey Rooney, Rod Serling, Brooke Shields, Tom Snyder, Daniel J. Travanti, Brenda Vaccaro, Dick Van Patten, Gary Wahlberg, Nancy Walker, and many more of your favorite stars. <laughs> Gentlemen, Dick Clark. Oh, yes. Oh, what a good group you are. Thank you very, very much. We're very happy to have you here. Good evening and welcome once again to more TV censored bloopers. And I've got to tell you, the last time we got together to do this, the response was phenomenal. So many people said, oh, well, anyway, tonight we've assembled another rare collection of things that were never supposed to be seen or heard by anybody. Bloopers, as we affectionately call them. The blown lines, the ad-libs, the breakups, the slips, the trips, the falls from your favorite TV shows and movies. Now, you know, interesting thing. Bloopers are not exclusive to Hollywood. They are an international phenomenon. Here's a very good example. This is a scene from a news program in England involving a model airplane. Now, I'm sure that there is at least one man somewhere in this world who wishes this thing had never gotten on the air. Oh, terribly sorry, pity. You know, the British stay so cool even in an embarrassing moment like that. And, of course, we really don't mean to embarrass anybody tonight. I think it was um, Alexander Pope, the English poet, who said that to err is human, to forgive divine. What was not known is that it took him 17 takes to say it. Right. <laughs> now, we're going to be right back with Rock Hudson, Morgan Fairchild, Dom DeLuise, Don Rickles, Dudley Moore, and a lot more TV censored bloopers. Veal Parmesan specialty sandwich at Burger King is Mwah, delicioso. Oh, just wait until you see our new delicious specialty. Taste the tender mayo, topped with sauce and cheese. Try it, try it, you'll love every bite. Go on, try it, delight your appetite. It's loaded with sauce and dripping with cheese and loaded with veal. May I have a bite, please? No one can resist your Parmesan. into a thousand tomorrows comes a car made of the right stuff. The 1982 Toyota Celica, aerodynamically conceived to be efficient, not just different. Its new wedge shape with retractable headlights cheats the wind for a performance not even reached in many sports cars. The 1982 Toyota Celica, the right stuff for the right time, right now. Celica.
Well, I'm sure we've all made embarrassing blunders at one time or another, and if you're like me, I'm sure you've said to yourself, someday I'm going to look back on this and laugh. Well, that's exactly what we intend to do tonight. We're going to share with you some of the outtakes of productions that have been rescued from the editing room floor. And uh, as a matter of fact, many of these we were fortunate enough to get directly from the stars themselves. Now, keep in mind that performers are not always responsible for the flubs. A uh, prop, uh, costume, scenery, anything can cause something to go haywire. Ran in two squadrons of bombers, Heckel 111s. Detective cover one squadron to Messerschmitt 110. The time we intercepted the moon, we were at the limit of our range. Jerry, of course, planning the raid and figured on that. But the result that we just couldn't hang on long enough. I think we got two one tens. I'm not sure, but they were probably. Oh. <laughs> there are two things we can do. A, we can get the ordinary rake and rake over the area, it's breaking not it up. Quite an ordinary rake, is well, it, Bob? No, it's, it's, uh... it, it, it's, it's a especially strong... Especially strong rate, this is. Now, that's a very strong... <laughs> you know, generations of children have grown up with the television host, Mr. Rogers. He is a gentleman, a man who is always totally in control. Now, watch him as he me meets his match, as he tries to put up one of those, uh, you know, those one-man tents. It's so easy, even a child can do it. Looks a little like a teepee, doesn't it? Of course, a teepee is real home for some people. Yeah. Well, all you have to do is press the top and voila, or uh, almost voila. <laughs> this works. <laughs> helps to have two people to put these up. The center has been in the planning stages for some 15 years now and was finally authorized by the South Dakota State Legislature this year. <laughs> Here's Earl Holloman in a tense scene. The rifle is jammed. He reaches for his pistol and pulls out his wallet and his... Oh, his holster. <laughs> Here's Mr. Rogers again. He's got it. He's got it down pat. Well, almost. Bang! <laughs> 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 The movie's called Fire on the Mountain. The star is Ron Howard, a young rancher trying to protect his property. What are you doing? Never leave a car and drive! Let me try it once more. Third time's the charm, right? <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> My sentiments exactly. It's a joke for later on. Listen every afternoon at this time for our drawing. On weekdays, you can win a $20 Coco gift certificate. And on Fridays, a 19-inch color TV. Now for the drawing. You know, the, the word ad lib is short for the Latin word ad libitum, uh, which in simple English means, here's some scenes that you won't find in any script. This is Jim Neighbors in his first episode as Gomer Pyle. Now, this is what we, we saw on television, but watch his real-life off-camera reaction. <laughs> Well, you don't exactly like following Barbara back home with it, done it, but after all, it's just your first time. 
shut up. <laughs> now, this is a very serious Army training oh, film yeah. on safety. Keep your eye on the corpse. You never gave one regard to safety. And look at you now. You're ten toes up, folks. This was caused by carelessness in the United States Army. <laughs> die, damn it, die. Here's Jane Mansfield at the 1957 Golden Globe Awards. Special award in recognition of his superb artistry, the beloved Pepe Canteen Flowers. <laughs> premiered last night, but Mickey Rooney is going to accept. to be tall. I'd walk a million miles for one of your smiles, my ma, ma, me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, taking a pie in the face isn't always as easy as it looks, especially when the recipient of the pie is Don Rickles, one of the great ad-libbers of all time. I asked Don how he feels about taking a pie in the face. Well, uh, I'll be very honest, when you know a pie's coming at you, it's very hard to play it straight. I mean, you, you start to get a little uptight laughing about it. It doesn't bother me to get hit with the pie, but you want it to work out. Now, when you do about 300 takes, and they're going in as the term and chub is golden hours, and the crew is starting to stare, saying, when is this jerk going to get it right? You know, and you're standing there with a lot of custard, although you didn't have to wipe you up and dress you up all over again, it starts to get pretty sticky. I'd walk a million miles for one of your smiles, my, 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 me. <laughs> what happened? They're rehearsing a max headed comedy in the next studio and one of the pies got loose. <laughs> sorry. You dirty rascal. Sorry. <laughs> what I do is I just walk out the set. There's no motivation. That's 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 the job. That's the thing I have to do. And I go out there and I do it and wait for an Emmy. <laughs> Shark, you really believe you can lose weight that way? Robinson, I told you I was desperate. And besides, jogging is is it's a lot. Shark, you really believe you can lose weight that way? Robinson, I told you I'm desperate. Besides. It beats jogging. You never heard of anybody drop dying. <laughs> Shark, you really believe you can lose weight that way? Robinson, I told you I'm desperate. Besides, it beats jogging. I never heard of anybody who dropped dead from chanting. <laughs> Come on, Shark, you really believe you can lose weight that way? Robinson, I told you I'm desperate. Besides, nobody ever... <laughs> Sure, it's easy for you to laugh. I find being funny is uh, very, very important to me. It was either that or work for my uncle in the garment center saying we're missing three buttons. <laughs> we'll be right back with Dom DeLuise, Morgan Fairchild, and a little later on, Rock Hudson, so stay with us. <laughs> We got a treat for you. You are about to meet a very beautiful and talented lady. She's been called the sex symbol of the 80s. 
She is beautiful. She is graceful. She is adept. She has it always under control. She uh, is just, whoops. Uh, <clears throat> oh, well, you'll see what I mean in a second. She is one of the stars of the hit series Flamingo Road. Ladies and gentlemen, Morgan Fairchild. wanting to ask you. Flamingo Road is high drama, intense, serious, and all of that, but there was a bed scene in that thing that was neither serious, sexy, or anything. It just fell apart. Why? Well, Mark suddenly got it into his head to throw passion out the window and just take a flying leap like this at me. It's difficult to feel real romance when you see a huge body coming at you. Out of Did the bed collapse or any of that? Uh, yes, sort of the canopy fell down around us and, and not very romantic when you're trying to fight your way out of a canopy. I cannot understand why when you work all the hours you do and you deal in drama, why is there... We did a giggling segment in the last show. Why do actors laugh a lot? Well, it's because you, you are concentrating so hard on what you're doing at the moment. And, and you know, you, especially on like Flamingo Road, we have such a great talented group of people. And everybody comes in and they're very concentrated on what they're doing. And sometimes just because of the concentration and the long hours and, it, you know, it's the, the fifth take and you've been there for 14 hours or something and all of a sudden it, you just start to go. <laughs> I can't remember my next line, Constance, or I would say it to you. <laughs> that land has been in my wife's family for generations. Well, that isn't the right line. <laughs> I know lots of things. But I don't know the next line. <laughs> I really have got to admire you, Claude. Your name isn't Claude, but I might be anyway. Either a real pervert or a common black man. Bill, you can't go out like this. Get your hands off. It's just a bundle of laughs every day. Now, the movie you're in, it's called Seduction. What is, what is the significance of the title? Oh, well, it's not an actual seduction. For once, I am the good guy, and uh -huh. Andrew Stevens is the bad guy. Yeah, I, it's a very stark drama, but there is one scene in the hot tub. Is Andrew the guy in the hot tub with you? No, 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 that's Michael Sarazen. Uh -huh. Ladies, he is a terrific kisser, let me tell you. <laughs> wait, 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 already I'm in trouble. Well, tell me about the scene. What happened? They put so much chlorine in the water that your boat, you feel like your skin is peeling off. If you've been in there about 10 hours, believe me, passion wanes. <laughs> It's not everything it's crapped, crapped up to be. <laughs> That's our show, folks. <laughs> See, the wonderful thing is in live television, that's what happened. Well, anyway, meanwhile, back at the ranch, the last time I saw you on television, you fell down a flight of stairs. Now, that wasn't, that wasn't you. No, of course not. You think I'm crazy? <laughs> they, they probably would have loved it if I'd done it, but we Special all... people do that? Oh, sure. A trained stunt woman. I, I wouldn't even begin to attempt that. All right, now, that's the way it's done in Hollywood. But what I would like to do now is show you a whole series of trips and falls that are for real, leading off with one of the great fall guys of all time, President Gerald R. Ford. Oh. <laughs> This is Tom Snyder. Please join us for the contact program uh, Thursday morning. <laughs> Thursday morning at nine o'clock. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dick, now this is a, a stunt where the actor should have taken a fall, but he forgot. <laughs> Tell me 
a little bit about seduction. You're a news anchor person. Mm -hmm. It's not a comedy. No, no, it's not a comedy. Um, it's, it's about a news anchor woman. And, uh, you know, I have to tell you that after doing the research on that part, I have a brand new respect for TV news people. E even these distinguished news persons, and as almost perfect as they are, they are only human. And don't you know, we've got some of their beauties preserved, right? Take a look. News bloopers. The development in that Stipe trial will switch downtown live now to reporter Sherry Sellers. Oh, hell. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Still to come on Eyewitness News, Al Meltzer with sports and a report on the Eagles' big win over the Bagels. <laughs> towards Christmas. Is it getting too commercialized? Are people losing the spirit? No, I think Christmas is, is a wonderful thing. I think they should have it every year. It seems the majority of the people are confused over Proposition 14. If you're one of those, we advise that you read up on the initiative before going to the poll in November. Remember, if you're for the initiative, you're against the Rumford Fair Housing Bill. If you're against the initiative, you're for the Rumford Fair Housing Bill. We'll try that again. If you're against the initiative, you're against the. If you're for the. If you're for the initiative, you're against. I don't think these guys are any different than I am. One year I vote Republican, the next year I vote Democrat. I'm um. What is it? Not bisexual, but what is it? <laughs> the is, Wayne can throw a baseball through a car wash, and the ball never get wet. Lee, that's sports. <laughs> well, there's one thing for sure, Dick. He's bound to have the cleanest <laughs> in the majors. Thank you. Now, here's one of the great delayed Wait, reactions of all times. It finally dawns on him what he just said. The North Carolina Agriculture <laughs> Department endorses a small watershed. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we'll have that story in just one moment. on the saving of our wildlife. Now, the only ecological damage being done here is by a well-meaning newscaster. Watch him and watch the poor bush that he's trying to save. <laughs> the only visible damage here so far seems to be the killing of some of this plant life. The only visible damage here so far seems to be the killing of some of this plant life. But until the samples of the paint and the other chemicals... Uh, the only visible damage here so far seems to be the killing of some of this plant life. But until the chemicals and whatever else here... The only visible damage here so far seems to be the killing of some of this plant life. But until the rest of the chemicals are analyzed, whatever else is here is tested. The only visible damage here so far seems to be the killing of some of the plant life. But until the chemicals and whatever else is here are analyzed, Near, nearby water supply is checked. We really won't know. Nearby El Capitan. <laughs> A little plant bites the dust. <laughs> Never say die. Oh, Morgan, you're a good sport. Thank you so very much. Thank much you. good luck. Continued success on Flamingo. Thank you very much. Morgan Fairchild, ladies and gentlemen. You know, we're talking about giggles before. If you've ever had a case of the giggles, you know that they're not only highly contagious, they're also not easy to cure. Now, this is uh, Carol Burnett trying to get through this scene from an episode of, uh, I think it was Gomer Pyle. Sergeant Carter? Sergeant Barnes. We have a problem, Sergeant. Yeah? Yes, and it has to do with PFC Gomer Pyle. Now! He cannot shovel in my show, and he cannot sing in your hole. So? So if he could, but <laughs> Sergeant Carter? Sergeant Barnes. We have a problem, Sergeant. Yeah? And it has to do with P.F.C. Gomer Pyle. Now, he cannot shovel in my hole. <laughs> Well, if there were uh, a Giggler's Hall of Fame, 
the name Dom DeLuise would certainly be nominated. And I asked Dom if he giggles all the time or just when he works with Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds has got uh, an enormous amount of energy. So when you do a picture with him, sometimes you start 7 o'clock in the morning. And then 7 o'clock at night, the sun is going down. It's very warm. You've done a scene many, many times. Cars have gone by. An airplane has gone by. And it's not because you're so happy. You're just exhausted. And what happens is he will look at you and he will do one little thing that he didn't do the time before. And then you start laughing. There's one time when I was supposed to say the name John Meninas. Now, that doesn't seem very difficult. But five minutes before, it was Infantilino. And they changed it because I guess there was an Infantilino. And they wanted to change the name. So they said, the name is now John Meninas. I said, oh, I got Infantilino in my head. So I wrote it down on a little piece of paper right here out of camera view and my back was to the camera and Jerry Reed was there and a wonderful actor named Mark Lawrence who was really tough came in said what's your name you'd be in Fantolino right how'd you know because you're the only Gavoon's dumb enough to try to muscle in on John <laughs> John who <laughs> John Menino so you because you're the only Gavoon's dumb enough to try to muscle in on John Mazet <laughs> <laughs> Because you, please, please go. Here we go. Yeah, because you're the only Gavoon's dumb enough to try to muscle in on John <laughs> Meninas. <laughs> You'd be in Fantolino, right? How'd you know? Because you're the only Gavoon's dumb enough to try to muscle in on John Mazzetti. <laughs> I was working with a wonderful actor named Bill McCutcheon, and I was supposed to go to my pocket, get a cigar, and hand him a cigar. And I went to my pocket, I took out a pen, and gave him a pen. Where's Jaime? Oh, Jaime's away. Yeah. Uh, we're taking over. Huh? Here, yeah, have it. <laughs> <laughs> But Jerry Reed was, uh, was really angry, and he, uh, he smacked a pack of papers, and it just hit me in the groin. And uh, I wasn't able to go on. Well, guys, it's certainly been a pleasure working with you. A movie set is one of the most wonderful places to be around, because Everyone is helping the director, mostly. I mean, they really are just concentrating very hard on what the director wants. And um, you're getting so much support from everybody. It's a, it's a lovely place to be. Cut! Drink! Fabulous! Great! Well, he's absolutely right. A movie set is a great place to be. And we'll be right back with more bloopers from movie sets of Rock Hudson and Dudley Moore. <laughs> Welcome back to more TV censored bloopers. We call it a slip of the tongue. The British call it uh, a clanger. The director calls it take two. And here are some scenes that require more than one take simply because the actors' mouths didn't work correctly. You know what, Grimmie? <laughs> I think that my bracelet is caught on my knurg. <laughs> What happened? I stepped on one of those rocks that looks like a fish. I stepped on yeah. one of those fish that looks like rocks. There we go. Thank you very much and welcome. Good evening to the... <laughs> Remember it well. Now, William Shakespeare wrote What's in a Name. Now, lucky for him, he never had to pronounce the name of Gina Lola Brigida. Actor Dick Van Patten was not so lucky. Take a look. Now, the lovely lady with him is Donna Dixon. How about a little European graffiti? Whatever became of the Italian sex symbol of the 50s, Gina Le Lola? <laughs> <laughs> How about a little European graffiti? Whatever became of the Italian sex symbol of the 50s, Gina Le... <laughs> How about a little European graffiti? Whatever became of the Italian sex symbol of the 50s, Gina Leo... <laughs> How about a little European graffiti? Whatever became of the Italian sex symbol of the 50s, Gina Lolola Brigitte... <laughs> How about a little European graffiti? 
Whatever became of the Italian sex symbol of the 50s? Gina Lola Brigida. <laughs> Listen to this. This, as far as we know, is the first known recorded blooper. This is the very distinguished announcer, Harry Von Zell, introducing the 31st president of the United States, Herbert Hoover, but he had a little problem. You can visualize the president coming in. This is radio. Harry says... Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United States, Hoover Hoover. Can you imagine an audio, a radio audience of millions listening, hanging on his every word, what ran through his mind? I don't know what ran through his mind, but I do know another president, President Jimmy Carter, must have had a famous fictional admiral on his mind when he made a speech and he made reference to what he hoped it would come out to be Hubert Humphrey. And we're the party of a great leader of compassion. Lyndon Baines Johnson. And the party of a great man who should have been president and who would have been one of the greatest presidents in history, Hubert Horatio Hornbill. I think he's been until the end of the show. And uh, we have to thank uh, the John Leffler of our uterus. Uh, uterus. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Listen, I got one other bit of information on that Sandra Delman's case I picked up. Well, no, not directly, but it gives someone a real good reason to have, uh... <laughs> Colonel, you're mistaken. I'm Lieutenant Colton, a Union officer, temporarily assigned to Secret Service, in hopes that we would, might be able to get rid of this thing that we shot here. <laughs> I would like your statement as Lord Mayor of London on the... I'm not Lord Mayor of London. I'm sorry. <laughs> Quincy, can I see you for a long a moment, please? <laughs> okay, Pan Am 117, abort your landing and proceed to the top of the stack. Third jet, November, Charlie, 9505. Hold where you are. Okay, American, 997, 97, 97, well, the director's You're told Chevy Chase two. to back it up, and he does it back. Okay. If you got nuclear, no, no, this is neither. What? Denise, we can do it. One of the advantages of old age is that you're never in a hurry. Uh, uh, Jack, pause it. <laughs> you know, when an accomplished actor reflects upon his craft. His comments are often brilliant and profound. Here is an eloquent example. On stage, you act. On film, you think. On a movie screen, your face is 35 feet high. So if you lie to him, you've made a 35 foot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the man who uttered that poignant message, one of the world's favorite actors and the star of the new NBC television series, The Devlin Connection, Mr. Rock Hudson. Where did Wiener come from? I, the, you wrote the copy. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> we never want to make fun of anybody, but I've got you right here in my clutches. Our research staff has uh, worked overtime. They have reported to me that you, sir, are the perfect actor. Mm -hmm. We have inside information that you do every scene in one take, that you never, ever make a mistake on the set. Is that true? I like your research team. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here is the proof. Hello, yes, yes, the commissioner. Where's the building? Yes, I'll be there in 20 minutes. What is it, sir? Things are starting to pop. A building was broken into last night, a patrolman and caught Bill. <laughs> what is it, sir? Things are starting to pop. A building was broken into last night, a patrolman caught one on the leg. Ballistics. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Give me a third chance. Go. Things are... <laughs> Cut, go. What is it, sir? Uh, uh, things are starting to... <laughs> oh, God. Your brains. Don't you know we have shots to match? 
One day you could look normal, the next day you could look like red as a, as a red hot mom. Oh, I figured he fed screwed. No, I figured he fed spood. No. I figured the cook fed dog scraps from the hotel every night and the dog the the blah blah. No. And most of all, may your happiness be as happy as mine has been happy. <laughs> Here's to your troubles. May they all come as quickly as they came. You know, you have worked with some of the most famous leading ladies in the world, and I was researching, and I looked through a Life magazine. It was full of wonderful pictorial coverage. It's bringing back memories already. It was a, it was a thing called Lover Come Back with mm -hmm. Doris Day, but there was a beach scene in there. In there. It yes. did not run the way you anticipated? Well, uh, <clears throat> we were lying on the beach like so. The camera was shooting straight down on us, and I had a ridiculous line I had had to say to Doris. I'd like to kiss you but I don't know how. <laughs> and she says, oh, well, that's easy. And she rolls over and plants one on me. Now I, the joke is over, and I take over to kiss her, except you can't roll over smoothly, and our teeth click. <laughs> you didn't know what you were doing. Millen and wife, the television series, you played opposite a lot of leading ladies. Let me play a little game with you. I'll drop a name, and you tell me a little something about uh, uh, Martha Ray. Talented. Brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely. No problem. That's funny. Opera? You hate opera. Well, I'm developing a, a, a father's ass for a certain crown opinion. <laughs> Pick up. How is your mighty fine chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, is everything to your liking? Hmm. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about, um, let me try another, Nancy Walker. Is there anybody that comes to mind? Well, Nancy, of course, is a brilliant comedian and short. Yeah, well, if a frog had wings, he wouldn't bump his keister every time he jumps off a log. <laughs> you know, in the movie The Star Maker, you played opposite Brenda Vaccaro. Now, we have an outtake. You're not in that scene. No, have you ever seen I, it? No, I've never seen it. But we will share it together because something bizarre happens here, and this is from your film The Star Maker. Make you a star. <laughs> a big famous star. <laughs> Don't look at me so sad. Read it. Mouth the words round like an orange. You do understand it, don't you, honey? Sick of this part. <laughs> Are you busy? No, no, I was just finishing up. I just wanted to show you this dress that uh, I have a do um, angel seduction scene. But I can come back later. No, 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 let's look at it. Come Are on. you sure? Yeah, sure. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no. That's all in the past. Yes. There's, a, there's a new thing in your life, the television series on NBC called The Devlin Connection. Yes. What's it all about? Well, it's a, another crime show, Private Investigators. I, uh, I find that I have uh, a son that I didn't know I had. And uh, uh, I have retired out of this uh, since I'm in the performing arts. Now, the kid who was always screw screwing up, I have to go back and help him out of the scrapes. And bail him out. Hopefully it's funny. Every week yes. on NBC. Yeah. I have one more, one more thought. Uh, no, no, fear not, fear not. I just wanted to thank you because you are a great sport. We wish you much good luck with the Devlin Connection. Thank you. Rock Hawk Hudson, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Let me, let me ask you a question. You remember the famous line from the Wizard of Oz, lions and tigers and bears, oh my, well, they left out some animals. Ow, ow. Remember this from our last I'm show, sorry, a very I'm reserved sorry. Englishman, Mr. Richard Whiteley and a hungry ferret. Oh, it won't hurt you. It is hurting you. Put it down. <laughs> if you 
you just hold on to mine? I can't hold on to it. Can you just hold it? <laughs> now, this must be the oh. climax of the situation. <laughs> oh, that hurts. Now, I'm happy to say that Mr. Whiteley's finger healed nicely, but the, that incident made him one of the most famous men in all of England. He does a talk show there, and we're going to return now to another show of his with another guest, but that, that incident made him a marked man. So I've always wanted to uh, work with you, you know. Have you? Yeah. But you've never heard of me before today. Have ah, you're famous. You know the bit. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is a scene from the movie Tarzan the Ape Man. The girl is Bo Derek, the man Miles O'Keefe. Watch here as the scene widens out. It's a very uh, playful lion in the scene that likes Bo just a little too much. Here he comes. He's sneaking in. And watch out. Oh, watch, I'd leave too. Now, what are you trying to tell me? You know, the last few hundred years have been the dark ages in terms of man's treatment of members of the animal world. Now, I'm going to make this speech now. You be quiet. But lately, a little light has begun to dawn in scattered areas all over our Earth. Man has suddenly started to use his heart and his brain to save the animal. Nowhere else. <laughs> Dudley Moore is currently starring in the hit movie uh, Arthur. He plays a lovable, laughable drunk, and I asked him if playing that part was as much fun as it looked. Yeah, because Arthur is really, as it, I mean, there are often occasions in, in Arthur's life where he, he laughs at the people, or with the people he's with, and so it's sometimes indistinguishable, you know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like, uh, the end of the picture where um, Liza says to me, have you ever... Ever been on the yacht? No, is it wonderful? And then, uh, Bitterman, uh, he says, ah, oh, yes. Uh, the happiest days of my life was spent on our yacht. I remember that. That <laughs> slow look we both gave <laughs> Sir John with that scene with Liza where he's saying... Does Arthur know you're here? No, Arthur is far too fine a person to be involved in extremities of this kind. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Does Arthur know you're here? No, Arthur is far too fine a person to be involved in episodes as devious as this. Does Arthur know you're here? Well, Arthur is far too fine a person to be involved in anything as... No, Arthur is far too... Does Arthur know you're here? No. Arthur is far too fine a person to be involved in uh, anything as serious as... There's a pro for you. And here he was, lying in bed, dying, um, not as an actor, but as, a, as the personality in the film, and uh, this fly came in and sat on his nose. You don't need to be so frightened of it. What? Dying. It seems natural. Even comforting. <laughs> uh, uh is supposed to have stolen this tie out of Bergdorf Goodman's, and... Uh, uh, and the, the store detective runs out to catch her, you know, and I come up pretending I'm a friend, saying she's got the store, the store, the tie for me. May I, may I see the tie? And so she's supposed to have this tie in her, in her bag, and for some reason it wasn't there, and it was just uh, hilarious seeing her search through it. I told you I didn't steal the tie! Well, look, so <laughs> they flub their lines. I just sort of would react as I would in daily life, and sometimes it works. Nice place. I like a living room you can land a plane in. There's more of it. You want a tour? I've seen bedrooms. Bedrooms? Bedrooms. Bedrooms. Yeah, where you have bend. You? It, it, it never get, gets out on the screen, so it's wonderful to have a program like this to, to show these things. Here's a scene from the Emmy Award winning series Hill Street Blues. Now, I've got to tell you how this happened. This particular scene was filmed the day after 
the awards presentation. Somebody left their Emmy on the water cooler, right about over here. Now, watch the actor who comes into the scene, sees the Emmy, and tries to save the whole situation. Watch. Captain, about this morning. It wasn't your fault, Alf. It was my gun. Did you give a statement to IA? Then forget about it. Could have been any one of us. Okay, Captain. Frank, Jesse John Hudson's on his way in. Good, Henry. Bring him to my office, will you? Right. Through the years, we found some profound things about children. For instance, children should be seen and not heard. Uh, kids say the darndest things out of the mouths of babes and so forth. Well, here are some scenes from children's programs that will leave you speechless. So many things to do. Decorations to put up and things to buy and things to make and Christmas cards to send. So many things. I want to get off. Wait, wait, Jay. It looks like you have pencil and paper. Hmm. What are you doing? Hmm? He has to go. He has to go. <laughs> Our clues all over the forest. Mr. Badger helped write them. And now we'll pick teams of two out of the hat. Right. I'll be very sure. To <laughs> Remember, teamwork is very important. <laughs> for watching. Yeah, we hope to see you soon. Uh, uh, I also stuck. When we get, there we go, we'll put the fire out and you'll see something really exciting. I think we're having a little bit of trouble with the fire extinguisher. <laughs> Wait a minute, let's see if we can try once more and we'll put the fire out. for you. The bad news is that we have run out of time. The good news is that we haven't run out of bloopers. We're going to be back with a third edition. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm really proud to be part of an industry that's uh, brave and bold enough to laugh at its own mistakes. I'd like to thank all of our guests tonight for sharing in the fun. I'd like to thank all the wonderful people who appeared in tonight's bloopers. And finally, I'd like to thank the late Kermit Schaefer, the man who pioneered the collection of bloopers. We'll see you the next time. For tonight, Dick Clark. Good night. We're keeping you informed on Channel 4. At 5.30, it's news like you've never seen it, with Live on 4, followed by concise and accurate news, weather, and sports reports on Eyewitness News at 6. Then a wrap-up of all the day's events on Eyewitness News, the late edition at 11. When it's news you need to know, turn to Channel 4.